Uh, Paz, you look at the results this year, you look at the numbers, and there certainly was progress made this year, but you know, maybe not as much as, as fans or people outside would have liked to have seen. But as you look interior as a coach, as you saw this team, I think you've spoken a lot about how you saw this team growing throughout the season. What, what did you see, and where do you think that will help this organization going forward uh, in this coming out of the season? Well, um, Easy one, right? no, well, it's such a, I have about six answers in my head right now. I guess the simple way to explain it is we're, we're, we're not in the playoffs. The facts are it's not good enough. Um, did we make steps? Yes, we did. Did we grow? Yes, we did. Did we improve on metrics and analytics? Some of them, yes. Um, and key pieces. But the results weren't there. We're about results. How are we going to get the results? And, and what are we going to do from today till training camp next year, knowing what we know? So there was improvement um, in many metrics. But having said that, the fact is that we're not in the playoffs and, and we all need to get better, all of us. And um, coaching staff, all departments of the hockey team and players included, and that was shared with them today. Um, in, um, in a direct way, uh, if I may say it that way, but also keeping things in perspective. So when I evaluate the season, we have a training camp with 70-some players. Uh, that's going to change. Training camp's going to be harder next year with a smaller group. Uh, starting with the end in mind, which what does that mean? Is The end is first game of the season, how we prepare from there. So the day before the first game to the first day of training camp, how do we push that team so when the season starts? Um, but to answer your question, we have clarity now. Um, we've been evaluating the character of our players, um, the concepts, the systems, and all of that. Um, and there's going to be changes in how we play as far as systems. Nothing major, but a few things that understanding where our younger players, like the Selinger, the Chinnikov, Marchenko, um, now that we know more about Fantilli, what are those guys good at and how can we put them in a position supported by the system to be really good at? All year we've been in close games. So that was a big change from the year before. Um, but the way to evaluate it is <clears throat> early in the season, uh, new coach, new systems, new everything, new additions to the team. Okay, that's fine. But from um, mid-season till the trading period, we were playing really good hockey. We were in games. We were winning games. Um, so that's the part that we need to evaluate because we had our team at that moment. And then we had the trading period and the injury. So that part is more individual uh, assessments, more than team assessment. Um, but the, the, the team concepts and accountability and culture and what we need to do as far as the team is, we take that chunk of the season where we, we had our team understanding what was expected from them. They understood what, was, um, what we were looking for, the vision. How do we evaluate that block and build from there? So obviously um, we need to make a step. Uh, but before making a step, that's a very um, tricky part. You need to secure that foundation. And I think this year was what we've done. We, we created somewhat a foundation that we're going to build on top of that next year. What role does culture play in that? It's all about culture. It starts with culture. Everything is about culture. When you wear the Blue Jackets, a jersey, this is what is expected. And the culture is, to me, is everything. Uh, why? Uh, culture is a set of behaviors. How do we present ourselves to the rink? How do we play those games? How do we manage leads? How do we manage trailing from one or two in the games? How do we show up on days that we don't necessarily feel like it because we're tired? It's been a tough road trip or a tough schedule. Having that set of culture where, that kind of culture where 
we're going to work and we're going to enjoy working and we're going to try to be the hardest working team in the NHL. That's that's one part of the culture, playing for each other, uh, supporting each other. If one guy is not going, we know we have a system that will support that one guy not playing. Uh, everything is about culture. Where would you say you guys are in that process of instituting your culture that you eventually want? Well, it's hard to put a number. Let's say 1 to 10. I, it's hard to put a number on this, but I can tell you that there's a buy-in and in doing the right things, and we've seen it all year, that the, there's a buy-in and, and there's a desire to become that kind of team. So there, there's a, there's, there's a, there was growth into that. Um, do we still have room to improve? Absolutely. Um, and the culture is set by the people. It starts with the top to the bottom, and... <clears throat> The bottom is as important as the top, uh, regardless of where you are in the spectrum. Everyone matters, but that that uh, culture uh, installment and how we're going to play and how we're going to think and how we're going to behave is is huge. And and to me is you call up a player from the American League, you make a trade, you sign a free agent. When you come to the Blue Jackets, that's what we do. If you don't fit, get out. You don't fit. And uh, that's where we're heading. And uh, this year we set the foundation for that. You talked about this a little bit last night. Um, just the uncertainty, right? Uh, we know there's going to be a new GM. Uh, a lot of times GMs want their new coach, that kind of thing. I guess I'm wondering from your perspective, when I hear you talk about that, you know, putting culture in and, yeah. and the stuff, you know, earlier – you're you're talking about a, like a, like a guy who who wants to be here a while and and see this thing through. How much do you want to be here to to kind of just see this thing through? I mean, well, as we go forward here. It, well, I control what I control, and I, I really want to be here. Uh, I think I think this team is on the verge of, if we do it right, um, we can be quite successful for years. The goal is not to make the playoffs. The goal is to make the playoffs every year, to put yourself in the position to make the playoffs every year and then to be successful in the playoffs. Um, do I think this team is turning the corner? A hundred percent. Do I want to be here? A hundred percent. And more than that, the city is amazing. The fans is amazing. Ownership is doing, I mean, we have the support, we have the tools, we have the resources uh, that you need to have in order to be successful. Now it's just to build on top of that. Do I want to be here? Yeah, I want to be here bad. Um, and getting to know the players, what they need, what we think we need as an organization, where they're at in their career, building those relationships, that, that's investment. And when you really care about something, you invest all of yourself. And I didn't fall short of that. I invested everything I got, and I'm still going to do it until the day I'm, I'm being told, um, no, you don't show up to the rink tomorrow. Um, and hopefully that comes in many, many years. Um, Sean Corrales was in here and talked about everybody needs to look into the mirror after a season like this. When you look in the mirror, look back on your season, what do you see? A bald, bald head guy. <laughs> um, I see... Um, we started the season uh, in a position uh, where the expectations with the new guys, uh, we added Provorov, Severson, um, Voronkov, uh, uh, Fantilli, um, with a lot of uncertainty. And we didn't know exactly, we knew what kind of players they were, but it's it's a business of human people of human beings and and you may be that kind of player with one team when we take you out of a team and we put you on another other, other team it might the results might be a little bit different because it's interactions and and there's studies about that sociometric exercises that we we ran ourselves but um when i look in the mirror i i saw a lot of question marks um, I saw a vision of where the team is going. 
uh, and we faced a lot of adversity. I, I, I can tell you that um, there is no way I can work harder than I did this year. There is no way that I can invest more than I did this year. Um, I gave my best. The players know that. I know that. I don't need to prove it to anyone. Um, but I, I invested everything I got. And did I make mistakes? Absolutely, I did. Um, am I accountable for everything that's going on? I'm the head coach. I am. Um, but I have clarity. I have a very good sense of what needs to be done. And my job right now, when I look at myself in the mirror, is can I provide to the new GM the necessary information for him to make the right decisions? Whether it's to keep me or not, that's regard. I, that's irrelevant at that point. It's we need to help these new guys make the best decisions, and um, I've done that right. So many young players here and in the system. Um, is it possible to have too many young players, as in they don't have the experience to win at this level, and, and how do you counter that? I don't think you can, uh, because it's, it's a game of men. You look at the teams that are winning, like you look at the history of the NHL in the past 10 years, you can do the exercise, but the teams that are making the playoffs are not the youngest teams in the NHL. And being the young, one of the youngest team in the NHL is, a, is something that you have to go through at some point in your cycle. But at some point, too, you have to get older. And, um, and whether it's being patient for the young guys to grow and, and, and uh, become older players and more experienced players, or, or you acquire individuals that are in the NHL already and that can fill roles, until your young players can take over so um, because they're older and they, they were groomed in the American League. So um, I don't think there's a way around it because there's the history would tell you a younger team most likely won't make the playoffs. You have the exception once in a while, but most likely you don't make the playoffs. And it's just the nature of the game. It's the NHL. Uh, National Hockey League is the best league in the world composed with the best players in the world and it's men are winning in this league for different reasons just physically they're stronger they can sustain a certain pace for longer period of times for longer months they know what it takes they have this swagger confidence that when the game is 2-2 two, 3-2 two, two, uh, two, one they know how to react uh, there's the leadership part that comes with it. They know, they've, uh, they have experience about, okay, we, we're going through a tough period. This is what we need to do. We're going to get together. We're going to get closer together instead of being uncertain what, what, what's happening right now. How come we're losing or how come we're going through that tough moment? So there, there's, there's many reasons why um, older players and, and experienced players will help you make the playoffs and it's over the course of past years, it's quite obvious that if you're a young team, it's going to be really hard to make the playoffs. What are some of your best moments this year? They didn't even have to be on the ice, but just being head coach of the team, what are some of your best memories of this season? Um, certainly the first game, uh, first win, was uh, something I'll always remember, for sure. I think in one of our chats earlier this season, you said every summer you kind of focus on something you want to get better at as a maybe a coach or as a person or whatever it may be. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've had a chance to think about that yet yeah. this year. I guess out of curiosity, what, what may that be this, uh, this upcoming summer? Um, this summer, um, I have a few subjects. Um, not sure I want to share that right now. Uh, but yes, it's true. Every summer I choose one subject and I study that subject. Uh, in depth, and uh, it could be forecheck, could be diesel coverage, could be leadership, because it could be the mental aspect to it. This summer, I really want to focus on our team and have a deep dive. One of the things I want to do, deep dive into where we are and that where we can be next year, and 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 that's an easy part. You just look at successful teams and not so successful teams and what are the different numbers but the steady would be how do we get there because we've seen a game like Carolina Hurricanes is a pretty good hockey team right uh, we played a game last night we won the game 6-3 
and they removed a bunch of their key players in their lineup, I would have done the same thing. They're not injured or anything. They just protect them to play, to get ready in the playoffs. Um, but then you have a system where they play fast, fast, fast. And it's great. Like, don't get me wrong. I really admire how they play. But the, the players are right for that kind of system. So systems are important. My point is X's and O's matter, but not that much. We, it matters in the sense that once you have a full team buying into what you want to do and they're all on the same page, that system will become a good system. Um, and then building a system on the players, the skill set that you have in the room collectively, that becomes a great system. And I think that's what Carolina did. They're, they're building a system that it's all about pushing the pace, almost a man-on-man -man when they don't have the puck. It requires a lot of energy, but they have the players to do that. Once you remove those five, six, seven key players, their system becomes irrelevant. We beat them 6-3, but we have the same kind of lineup yesterday. So, um, so this summer, my point to you is I'll study some systems, but it's going to be way bigger and deeper than that um without being able to you know get guys together with the coaching staff in the off season and actually work on some stuff i mean can you use the off season to improve at at some of the special teams and things like that i mean i know the the penalty kill had its moments of, of really good uh, moments this year power play it was, it was a bit of a slog a yep. struggle at times yep. that's got to get better yep. how do you how do you can you use the off season to improve that, do you yeah. feel? Yeah, uh, working on skills. So every special teams or every part of the game, you can work on skills. So power play, puck protection, um, how you're going to have some deception in your passing abilities. So you, I call it component teachings. You take the power play and you dissect it with the skills that you need to have in order to have a successful power play. So we have you, 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 and, and this guy on the power play, that's what you're supposed to bring. So let's say for Voronkov, his job is to retrieve pucks around the net because that's a big component of the power play and tip pucks and get rebounds. So he can work on that in the summer. Um, for Marchenko, or as an example, could be his one-timer. Like just you focus on that. And by doing that component teachings, you can dissect a power play into habits and those habits you can work on that in the summer and that's something that's been shared with the players it's a really smart question <laughs> you, you mentioned something earlier and i was like how are you gonna do that you know, yeah um I, i'm wondering uh I, I know he missed all but 18 games uh patrick line he had a tough year this year yeah. uh, for a number of different reasons yeah um you know, when you look at this team and its ability to potentially bounce back pretty strong, I think you, you have to mention him as well, uh, potentially, whether he comes back, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, that's a big question mark. Where are you at with, with line A? I mean, you, you, as far as uh, how much did it, did it hurt this team to not have that well, guy? Of for course, he's season? a key player for the Blue Jackets, and, and he played the 18 games. Um, so you take a, a key player on your team and um, he's not there, he's just not there. And um, so that's, when you talk about a top line player, that, that should be not only a difference maker in a lot of games, like you think about all those one game goal, uh, one goal games that we lost. I mean, he's, he's a producer offensively, a power play guy that can shoot the puck. Like who knows where we would be at and what we would be talking about, um, but we missed him. We missed him a lot, um, but at this point, Patrick is—it's—it's uh, it's all about him getting right um, as a person, and from there, whenever he's ready, we'll welcome him back with open arms. How's that work? With the with the program, you know, he's in that that program. Does he have to like reach out to you guys if he wants to connect, no. or you no. guys can stay in contact just to make? Not really. No. Oh, no. Okay. Not really. We were not. What I've been told, anyway, is um, he's a, he's uh, he becomes he's a player in the NHL under the program, and he's not for the moment. He's not necessarily a Blue Jacket. He's just a player um, 
being um, under the program. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you guys. Thanks, everybody, for your attention.